To him, even silence is praise. For in him was created the universe of things, both in the heavenly realm and on the earth. All that is seen and unseen, he is the divine portrait, the true likeness of the invisible God. He rides across the heavens to help you, across the skies in majestic splendor. For he is the one all of humanity comes before with amazing wonders and with awe-inspiring displays of power. Everyone, everywhere, looks to him. For he is the confidence of all the earth. Stay tuned to see what that means, and we'll get started in just a few minutes. And so in the United States, in a nation that we got so fat, lazy, and rich, that we assumed that Christianity would always be dignified and honored, we are watching it slip through our fingers, and we do nothing. Why? Because we don't have the courage to stand up to people who say you have offended when did that become sin? I mean, when did that become sin? People that despise my faith try to use it against me. Oh, you Christians aren't supposed to offend people. I thought you Christians weren't supposed to offend people. I'm like, you know nothing of my religion. Christians are, are not allowed to maliciously offend people. I'm not allowed to think I'm better than you because I'm not. I'm not allowed to think God wants me more than you because he doesn't. I'm not allowed to think that God thinks I'm somehow superior to you because I'm not. Trust me, the only reason I'm a Christian, it's the only religion that would have me. <laughs> Tried to join the other guy. Can I join you? No, bacon. I'm out. I'm out! <laughs> What kind of God would deny me a BLT? I'm out of here! <laughs> but a unique thing happens when you become a true follower of Christ. He says you now are the deliverer of truth. Not of a religion. Not of a philosophy. Not of an ideology. Not of a point of view. Not of a thought concept you've tried on. Not some self-help guru thing. Not some kind of ideology or some sense of maybe you should give this a try. He said, I am truth. There's nothing else. Anything else is a lie. Are you ready to speak like that in America? You see, that's the unique thing. You don't have to be a jerk for people to hate you as a Christian. Don't be a jerk. You already got a couple of strikes against you for being a believer. You're supposed to be loved. They're going to hate you because of the truth. The enemy in this nation from our Christian heritage and our religious liberties. The enemy is not politicians. The enemy is not Democrats or Republicans. The enemy is not conservatives or liberals. Those are just titles given to the true enemy of all nations. Lies. Lies your enemy. You have to do the most unusual thing could ever have imagined when you become a true follower of Christ. And no one of us are ready to do it. We think we are until we hear the cost. We talk about it in a minute, but when you have to go out of this place where everybody's listening and go where they don't like you so much, 
then you see, is my behavior affected? If not, ooh, who are you? I'm going to say something that might be a little sensitive to some of you people. Listen to me carefully. I don't care. <laughs> Run across that. I thought that was pretty cool because a lot of times I think that's what's wrong with our nation now. Us as believers are being so silent for so long, mm -hmm. and we want to be politically correct. When the Bible don't ask us to be politically correct, it tells us to tell the truth. Right. Now, if the truth hurts, I hate it. Don't mean I don't love you and I don't care about you, but I love you enough. I'm going to tell you the truth. The truth says it will set you free, and we have to. We're living in a bondage society. Where we're all bound up and we're scared to say anything because it might be able to take it as a racial comment, it might take it as a slur or whatever, so we can't even speak our mind. Right. The Bible says, let your yeas be yeas and your nays nays. And don't be ashamed to say what you have to say. Right. If God says that I can do all things in Christ Jesus, if that offends you, I'm sorry. But that's going to be the truth. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand that. And what I'm learning going through all these trials and troubles and turning on the news and everything else, it's about time that God's people stood up and said, you know what? Enough is enough. Yes. And we're going to take back this nation again. And we're going to tell you what God says and not what man says. Because yes. a man is nothing but a lie. And that's what crept into our society. It's crept into our churches. We try to be politically correct in our churches that we don't want to offend nobody. But yet we have accepted sin because we don't want to offend them to tell them what they're doing is wrong. Right. We've got to be able to say, you are doing something that is not good for you. It's not healthy. It is, it's, it's destroying you. And that's what we're going to talk about today. It's called checkmate. If anybody's ever played a game of chess, it's a game of thoughts. You have to plan moves ahead of moves, ahead of moves, and you, you, you have pawns that you give up and you sacrifice to make moves to protect the king. And when you hear the word checkmate means the king has no more moves. And I say, not so. We're going to figure out why we're going to do that. We're going to go into a worship part. Marianne came up with a song. We're going to play one of her songs that she found in there. So I'm, I'm, for any suggestions about music that you have, Feel free to let me know what it is because this is y'all's church. It's not my church. It's our church. And what we need to grow and what feeds us, I need to hear from y'all too. So we'll go into the worship part and then we'll go into the word. Yes. 
always look up into the sky and stare at the stars. I always dreamed of being an astronaut and working for NASA. I never imagined doing anything else. I started playing piano when I was six years old and I absolutely hated it. My mom made all three of us take lessons. Jacob hated it the most out of all of us. Jacob loved to hunt. He loved being in the outdoors more than anything. Jacob was he would never say a bad word about anyone. If I would even start to say something bad about someone, he would immediately stop me. He was the kindest person I've ever met. He would always make everyone feel so included and loved and welcome. Jacob was always the life of a party. He was always so funny and goofy and was just such a joy to be around.
says, you know, the devil, I told you in the game of chess, when you hear the word checkmate, that means you're surrounded. You have no more moves. And the game is over. But God says, I don't think so. Because we serve a God who is a God of more moves than we can ever have. He shed his blood on that cross that we could defy all this earth could ever put at us. Nothing on this earth can take and come against us and allow unless we allow it. So this one verse is what God jumped out on me. And I'm going to let you read it. And I want to show you something in this verse. It's a, lot of, it's a short verse, but it's got a lot in it. John 10, 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. 
I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So the thief comes in the middle of the night to do what? The first thing he has to do, there's three steps in this verse. The first thing is, he comes to steal. He comes to steal your faith. He steals the word from you. He steals your joy. If he can steal your joy, he can defeat you. If he can get you down and depressed and, 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 and always woes of me and you forget about what he did on that cross, then he can come in and kill you. And take and take your life away from you, the life of abundance, the life of being an overcomer. He can't take your spiritual life, but he can take your joy away from you that brings death to your soul. And that you feel like there's nobody around you, and he can eventually destroy you. I know I misspelled that word, but <laughs> did I not? Oh, I Is it right? Okay. <laughs> I did good. <laughs> See, the devil can't even beat me for spelling. <laughs> So he can take it and end up destroying you. So the first steps we have to do, we have to learn to guard our heart. The Bible says, while you were sleeping, an enemy had crept into your area and planted tares among the wheat. Now here's what would happen is because we were sleeping, because we wasn't paying attention, because we wasn't doing what we thought we were making a move. I'm a checker player, not a chess player, because checker player is a fast moving game. And uh, I had it prophesied on me a long time ago because I always wondered why God had called me to the ministry. And every time I would step into the ministry, God would bless it, but it was always somebody that fought against me. It was like everything kept coming against me and God kept telling me it just wasn't my time. And the, and the Lord spoke to me and said it was like a checker game that you've been making all these moves and these jumps and these different positions, but it all is going to make sense in the end because they're not going to keen you, and when you do, nobody can be able to cop you again. And so we have to understand that there is a time and place for everything. Just because God's called you to do something and you're not fulfilling that calling right, that don't mean God ain't finished with you. He's preparing us for the time and the place that we can shine. God wants us to shine in all the things that we do because we are representative of him. We are ambassador of the kingdom. We're his, when, when we, I told you, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I know Mark was talking about when they were reading in John, is if you have seen me, you, you've seen the Father. And if you don't see the Father in me, then you never knew the Father to begin with. And we have to understand that. That if we don't represent what we're saying, people's not going to pay us no attention. That's right. Just like that comedian was talking about before, when did it get politically to be to be a sin to speak the truth? Right. But now we can't say the truth because out in that world they're against us because what is the truth in the word is a lie in the world. It's backwards. People are turning against each other. What's up is down, or down is up, and side is right. And we don't understand what's going on. And the chess game, the king is surrounded, and, and he can't move in any direction. Winner would say checkmate. How many times has the Satan has whispered in your ear, checkmate, checkmate? There's no way out. There's no way you can get out of this situation. Look what you've done. You you painted yourself into a corner, and you have nobody to protect you, and you're all alone, and the game is over. And Jesus says, No, that's not it. So when you hear the word checkmate, say, I don't think so. And even if I'm speaking this morning and you hear me say checkmate, you can say, I don't think so if you want to. You're not going to offend me because I want to get it in your spirit. That's because the devil screams checkmate don't mean the game is over with. We have to understand that. The devil wants you to say checkmate. The devil wants you to give up. He wants you to surrender and say, okay, game over. Ain't nothing I can do. No, that's when you start to fight. It wasn't to David met Goliath. That he came the king. It wasn't to Jesus went to the cross that we had salvation. We have to understand that sometimes what we think is our worst enemy is what is portraying us or projecting us into what we're supposed to be. The things that come against me is what makes me a better person. Whatever comes against me makes me stronger. When I work out, I take resistance that I can't handle and I practice it over and over till I'm able to do it easier each and every time. And not only am I able to do that way, I'm able to increase the strength that I have. We have to understand that what comes against you is not your enemy all the time. It might be your best friend to strengthen you to be what you're called to be. And we have to understand it. And it's all, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is it. It's whatever you perceive, you'll receive. If you perceive that you're defeated, guess what you are? You're defeated. 
If you perceive you're in victory and you're conquered, guess what you are? You're victory and conquer. The Bible says that I can do all things in Christ Jesus who strengthens me. That if I make up my mind, the power of a made up mind is a powerful thing. I can think myself happy or I can think myself sad. I can think myself to be somebody or I can think myself to be a nobody. It's always what I think. It don't matter what you think. It's what God sees in me and what I think about myself. We have to understand that. Heaven says, I don't think so. See, uh, the devil always whispering, checkmate in your ear. Romans 8, 31. What then shall we say response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? The scripture says, that God says if he's for us, who can be against us? So if I think that I'm defeated, then I'm saying God's not strong enough. I might not be saying it verbally out loud, but what I'm saying is ultimately is I don't believe God's got enough power to do it. Because I'm not admitting that I can do all things. If God's for me, who can be against me? If I say you're against me and you're controlling me, then I say God don't have enough control more than you do. I've given you more authority than God. So what have I done? I have stole, I have stole your knowledge of who you are. We, we, we have to understand there's steps in the process. You don't wake up depressed one day. You, it was a process that got you into the state of depression. And what happens is we started feeding that negative thought, and that negative start started to grow and mature and become part of us. Now, if we can do it with negative, we can do it with positive. And how do we do it with positive? We fail to steal our knowledge to get into the Word of God and find out what God says we are and who we are. I told you when I became a Christian this time, I had I had grew up in the church. My grandpa could quote the Bible from front to back to was a period, a comma, a, a, a decimal, or anything in there he could tell you about it and quote it word for word. But it didn't do me a bit of good because I didn't know what it meant. So until I, when I came to the Lord, I said, I'm sick and tired of what everybody else told me what the Word of God says, that I want to know what the Word of God says, so that when I get in trouble, I ain't got to go ask you, I can pull it out of me and get my own healing inside of me. Now what happens is sometimes we get surrounded by so much negativity, we listen to the negativity and we still listen to what's inside of us. Sometimes the Bible says, go to your closet and get along. And what you do in your private, I'll manifest in the open. So what happens is a lot of times we need to learn how to retreat. Yes. We need to learn how to get to ourselves. Remember the, the, the beginning of the thing I said sometimes the best worship you can do is silence. Yes. Sometimes we talk so much we don't hear what God is trying to tell us what he wants us to do because we're trying to tell God what we want to do and he can't, got enough, he can't get enough words out to tell us this, if you'll just be quiet. And be silent. In that silence, I'll come to you and I'll give you a healing and I'll give you your answer. But we live in a society that we don't like to be quiet. I know y'all looking at me that, <laughs> that I don't like to be quiet because I talk all the time. But I talk all the time because God is pouring so much stuff inside of me that it's like a fire set up in my bones. I want to pour it out. If you're around me, you about know what my sermon is going to be because I can't keep my mouth shut. I'm like a, a kid on Christmas Day. I can't keep a secret. Because it's coming out of me. And I have to force myself to keep my mouth shut. That even with my wife, she don't even know what I'm going to say. So what I've done to even protect that, I quit writing it down to Sunday morning. <laughs> that way I can't tell you what I'm going to say. But I get up on Sunday morning. I've learned to get up. I, I take all week long. I prepare and I pray, God, what, what do you want me to say? And I can tell you, he can take me from Indianapolis to California. <laughs> And I have no clue what I'm going to talk about till later that week. And he compiles all this information. It's like he puts all these bits of information in me and he just keeps feeding me and feeding me and feeding me and feeding me. And then all of a sudden I'm going like, check me. <laughs> and I come up with a sermon. Now, I, that's how God deals with me because my mind goes 150 miles an hour. It never stops. I wish I could turn it off. This thing never turns off. It's always, you can tell me about blue, and I'm thinking about, you know, blue is a car I used to have when I was 12 years old. When I was 12 years old, I start going on all these different things about blue. <laughs> and it's the way my mind works. But here's the thing about it. Even though it is my aggravation, and sometimes it gets me so frustrated, it's also my gift. 
Because when I read the word, I start to dissect the word. I start to tear it apart. I want to know what this meant. I want to know what it meant. Why did he say I? Why did he say we? You know, why does this mean? It breaks it down, and that's who God's called me to be. And each and every one of you, God's called you in that same fashion. And the devil is trying to steal that from you. So you don't work in the, the, the full calling that God has gave you. If he can keep you and steal your joy and steal your thing, then he can take and conquer you and keep you from what your purpose is supposed to be in life. When the devil says checkmate, say, I don't think so. Moses faced checkmate at the Red Sea. Here they are delivered them out of Egypt. And they're running through the desert. And the Pharaoh's coming on the hills, clicking at them. And they come to the Red Sea. Oh, Lord, checkmate. That's what old Pharaoh said. Checkmate, got you. You can't go nowhere. But what happened? God made a way when it wasn't the way. We have to understand just because you don't know the way don't mean God don't know the way. And the way we find out the way is we surrender our way to his way. And when we surrender our way to his way, he says, guess what? Stretch forth and you'll walk on dry land. Now, a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, the historians say, well, it was only two foot of water. Well, God drowned the whole army in two foot of water. That's, pretty, that's a miracle there, too. So if you want to believe that, we got even, that makes a miracle even more awesome. We have to understand that God says, just because the devil says checkmate don't mean the game is over with. The game is still on. The only way the game is over with is when you give up and when you surrender and you say, I, I'm destroyed and I can't do it. We have to understand that. You, remember, you can do all things. See, remember, you can do everything you can in a situation, but God can never do all he can ever do in a situation. In other words, you can do everything you know to do. Because the Bible says when you've stood, when you've done all you can do, stand. And when you stood all you could stand, stand some more. That used to drive me crazy. I'm like, okay, you want me to stand in the midst of my enemy? He goes, I'll prepare a table for you. That's cool, Lord. <laughs> he says, but you know what? There's nothing I can't do because my glory is so big, I can't show you all my glory. I can, I've got moves you've never seen before. Because guess what? I'll make up another one. <laughs> I'm the creator of the heavens and the earth. I hold the world in the palm of my hand. I knew you before you were even born. So he knows everything. He knows the beginning and the end. So therefore, why... Or are we so worried about what the devil has to do because he is not God. He's not even God's enemy. He has no even, he, God can't even call, he can't even say he's God's enemy because he's not even the same ball game as God. Okay, we're going to go to Habakkuk. <laughs> I'm really reaching back in the Old Testament now when I go to Habakkuk. A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet on Singnath. See there, I'm trying. Lord, I have heard your frame and stand all at your knees. Lord, repeat, repeat them in our in our day, in our time. Make them known in wrath. Remember mercy. God came from Timon, the Holy One from Mount Purim. His glory covered the heavens and his praise filled the earth. His splendor was like the sunrise, sunrise rays flashing from his hand. With his power was hidden. Plagues went before them. Presents followed his step. He stood and shook the earth and looked and made the national nations tremble and the ancient mountains crumble and the age old hills collapse, but it marched on forever. And here's what I want to do. He hid all his power. In other words, he still didn't give them all he could do because we couldn't handle everything God does. Remember when Moses went up on the mountain, he couldn't look but just on his backside? Because we can't stand the glory of God. We can't handle that much glory, that much righteousness. We can't, we can't, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Conceive the knowledge of his holiness and his goodness. We, we can't understand how a man can be nailed to a cross and look up and tell the soldier he still loves him too. We can't fathom that. That's how awesome a God we serve. That's how much he loves you. That he says, you know what? I love you no matter what you do. You're my child. But here's the thing about it. I stand for truth. And if you don't stand for truth, then you'll have to depart from me. I never would love you. 
So we have to understand, just because he loves us don't mean we don't have to do things too. A lot of times in the church, we don't want to tell the truth. There is some people that's not going to make it to heaven. There's some people that are going to perish and, and, and they end up going to hell. And there's going to be some good people, more good people that's not going to make it because they didn't accept Jesus in their hearts. On 9-11, there was a lot of firemen that rushed into that building to save lives. But if they didn't know Jesus Christ as their Savior, they didn't make it to heaven. So people who went to save other lives lost their own lives. We have to understand there is conditions to what God's love is. And it's conditions that all you got to do is love Him. All you got to do is accept me. I'm not telling you to go move a mountain. I'm just telling you to love me. Believe me. Trust me. Get in my word. Fellowship with me. Just be my friend. He calls us his friend. We have to understand that. Uh, the earth would come unglued if you expose all its glory. It's, it's a Christian job to tell the world, I don't think so. When the world says that there's no way that you have to have a vaccination to survive this plague, I don't think so. The only vaccination I need is the blood of the Lamb applied to my life. If the blood of the Lamb is applied to my life, no weapons can form can come against me to hurt me. Now, am I going to tell you you're going to go to hell for getting a vaccination shot? No, I'm not. That's when you and the Lord and your level of faith. Everybody has given a measure of faith, and everybody carries that measure of faith to a, to a certain thing. Remember, when they sowed on good ground, some got a hundred, some got ten, some a hundred, some a thousand fold. Even on good ground, there's different levels of it because you can go as high as you want to go. The only thing that keeps you from 10 to 1,000 is you. And we have to understand that. And we've got to quit pointing fingers at everybody else and start pointing fingers at ourselves and say, search me. If I'm not being prosperous, it's not the devil's fault. It's my fault. Because what did I tell you over and over and over? Knowledge is power. And if you don't understand something, go get more knowledge. And if you, he says if you're faithful to ask, he's faithful to give. If you get in the Word of God and you don't understand something, and it's like I can't pronounce some of these words, but I do God, I don't understand. What are you trying to tell me out of this scripture? What is this scripture trying to speak to my heart? And it might be just saying, I'm just teaching you how to talk. <laughs> See, we, we, t we, we think that God's going to come up with this great big thunderous word saying, Thou shalt walk on water. No, he said, Thou shalt love me. Thou shalt love your neighbor. Thou shalt do good and not evil. I should give and not take. We, un we don't understand. We look for this mighty, thunderous word, and God just saying, just be love. Love one another. See, Lazarus was whispered in his ear, he's been dead for four days. I don't think so. <laughs> Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Now, I believe in my whole heart, if he would have said Lazarus, every dead person would have raised out of the dead. That's how much power that name of Jesus had. When he called forward, he called forward Lazarus. He made it independent. So a lot of times the Bible says pray, pray specifically. In other words, pray for what you believe. If you don't, so a lot of times I pray for like in, in, with our home situation. God, I pray that you, you take care of this house situation and you do it. Like, no, I'm praying for the house I want. I want a two-car garage. I want a concrete driveway. I want a two-baths. I want my my, my, my my man cave to have my objective film projector up in there and watch football. I'm praying specifically what I want. I want Lily to have her own room with her clock with her picture on it. And she can go in and got all her toys in there and can go into her Lily's room. You laugh and it sounds stupid, but the Bible says we have not because we ask not. So what I'm trying to say in a certain way, if you don't have it, are you asking for it? That's not my question to ask. It's your question. What are, we, what are we asking for? Uh, the woman was caught in the midst of adultery. Remember the woman who was caught in adultery? They were going to stone her to death. Jesus showed up and said, I don't think so. <laughs> in other words, in that day and time, if you were caught in adultery, she was caught in the midst of adultery. She means she was in the act when she was caught. That was in that day, it was the law to stone them to death in a public stoning. But Jesus showed up and he had a mood. 
The devil said, checkmate. Jesus said, no. And he ran down and started writing in the dirt. And then anyone without sin cast the first stone. And when he looked up, he said, where's all your accusers? Now, this is the part of the verse everybody forgets about. He said, now go and sin no more. And what he was telling her, I was here this time. I might not be there next time. Yeah. You better take and record this because today I was your savior. Tomorrow I might be your judge. We have to understand that. We have to understand there's consequences. The story of Adam and Eve. When, it, when, when we ate, they ate of the fruit, the devil says, checkmate. He got us to do the sin that we was to do. We gave up our, our right to be the kingdom. Jesus came on earth and man and went to the cross. He's hanging on the cross, taking his last breath. Checkmate. But Jesus says, I don't think so. <laughs> the stone rolled away and he rose again, and we have victory to this day. So when the devil is coming against you and he's screaming, checkmate in your ear, you need to say, I don't think so. Because my God is the God who's in control, not you. He gave me authority to reign. And he gave me the authority to say, get behind me, Satan. You have no authority. You cannot win. You've already been defeated. I'm just reminding you, I'm not having to defeat you because you were already defeated on the day of Calvary. I'm reminding you where your position is, and that's behind me, not in front of me. We turn around and get the cart before the wagon, and we put him in front of us instead of behind of us. And all we can see is doom and, 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 and trouble and checkmate. And God says, it's not checkmate. I don't think so. And we have to understand, when something's coming against you, it's your opportunity to show off your God. It's your opportunity to show his love. It's your opportunity to show his wisdom. It's your opportunity to show his love and compassion that he has for you and this world. Now, here's the thing about it. Let's quit trying to give the devil all the credit and let everybody know what he's doing against us. And let's start giving God the credit for what he's doing for us. He's given us opportunity to show his glory and his power. And he's been hiding it inside of you. See, you don't think I'm going to bring that back around. He's hiding his glory inside of you so that you can expose his glory yes. in this world. So that people says that is a believer. That's what Jesus looks like. That's what the Father looks like. The God said that earth operate like heaven. And heaven don't operate in turmoil and controversy. It operates in victory and joy and peace. So that's what I want to end up with this subject today. Today, I want to do communion. So we, we haven't done communion for in a, in a while. Uh, me and my wife have been doing so much communion. We've been greedy with the communion that we're going to share with the church. But with this communion, what I want to do is I want us to take and do communion with this in mind. That God takes and shows each and every one of us what our path is. And how we can be better representatives of his love, his mercy, and his glory. And so when we pass out these, this uh, communion, we're going to take a moment and we're going to ask God to take anything out of our, our hearts or mind that is negative that might cause us to not think of his goodness and his love. And then we're going to go into communion. And then uh, Deacon Carey, if you're going to go up here, pass out the communion. That's my deacon now. Communion, <laughs> boy. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer right there. Lord, we thank you for your love and mercy, Lord. We just come to you with a clean heart, mind, Lord, and we just say we love you with all our hearts, mind, body, and soul, Lord. 
Search us to and fro, Lord. Let us know what you would have us to do, Lord. Let us cleanse our hearts of any wrong, evil thoughts or, or, or negativity thoughts, Lord. Let us know that you are loved and that we want to be part of you and a representative of you, Lord. As we move into the communion, Lord, we just say we love you with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. Amen. Then he took this. It was his bread. It was broken. It was representative of his body. It was broken for our healing. That we have to, he said, do this and remember some me. Then he took the cup, which represents the new covenant of his love and his mercy. And he told us to love each other as he loved. If we love him, we should love one another. And he said, do this and remember some him. And before we go, we're going to end it out this way. Thomas and Nora have been sick with the COVID. Our neighbor is in the hospital, got the COVID uh, virus, where they got him on the oxygen in there. So we want to pray for them and extend our love out to them as a church family. We love them and miss them. And then we're just dismissing uh, prayer. Lord, we thank you for your love and mercy, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that you said by your stripes, we are healed, Lord. And we just lift up Noah Thomas this morning and, and William, uh, Willie, uh, our neighbor, who is sick, Lord, we just say that by your stripes, they are healed in Jesus' name. We claim that healing. And we say, Lord, we're waiting for the good report of their, their testimony of how you touched them and they're, they're healed and they're whole again, Lord. Lord, I just pray as we go out this week, Lord, that you take and let us be an example of your love, Lord. And when the devil screams checkmate, we say, not, not this time, Lord. Not so, Lord. We just say we love you with our hearts, mind, body, and soul. It's in Jesus' name.